when you're talking about the kind of dogs you're training, I find that really interesting because I'm, I'm seeing a lot of trainers go, I'm just a flusher trainer or I'm, I'm going solely with pointers and you're sitting here going, I'll take on all comers, but I don't care what kind of dog it is. That's, that's a neat sure. path to take. Well, one of the coolest dogs I ever had in here for training, a guy called me from Madison. He'd gotten this dog at the pound and he wanted to know, he said, it kind of likes birds. Do you think you could make him into a bird dog? So he brought the dog up and as it turns out, the dog was half border collie and half Springer Spaniel. So I had no idea what this dog was going to want to do on birds. So I set some birds in the field and I thought I'm just going to turn him loose and let him run around and see what happens. And it was the coolest thing. I'm probably missing a huge marketing trend with this cross. Um, the Springer Spaniel part of him would use his nose and find the bird. And as soon as he located a bird, the border collie switch would flip on. He would get behind the bird and very carefully in border collie style, herd it to the gun. He always would pinch the bird off between him and the gun. That, like in, cool. in kind of in the low crawl thing they do when they're... yes. That, you know, very hesitant to step at a time. And it was just the funnest dog to hunt over. But a lot of trainers wouldn't have taken a dog. Oh, he's a mixed breed mutt. I don't want anything to do with that. So, you know, it's fun. It's interesting. And I learn something from every dog I put my hands on mm -hmm. that I can take to the next dog. That, you should have probably trademarked that. Because <laughs> somebody's <laughs> going to somebody's gonna listen to this. We've, we've, we've done episodes with... Uh, uh, collie trainers, you know, really into the sheep herding thing. And I've, I've got to see some demonstrations with Fonzie and some other people that focus, you know, like I, I always, I, I, I've been around German short hairs a lot lately and just their, their prey drive is incredible. Like they're fo in it, like squirrels, chipmunks, whatever, just whatever they see that catches their attention. It's amazing. But when you see a collie do its thing, like you're talking about getting into that low crouch and, mm -hmm. you know, trying to move something in the right direction. It's an amazing thing to witness. It really, really is. It's so much fun to watch. And border collies are so smart and they take direction so well. I've often told my, my retriever field trial friends, if they ever let border collies run retriever field trials, the labs are going to lose. <laughs> and it's, and it's true. They are, they are, uh, an incredibly interesting dog. You know, like you, you you hear you hear about their intelligence and you see you know how how they can be worked at such a huge distance or they can do up close stuff. I mean, they they and they in and their drive. It's just they're just such a cool dog. They really are. So did that guy end up hunting with that dog? I think he did. Yeah. I haven't heard from him in a few years now. He moved away, he took a different job, but yeah, I think he hunted with him. And you know, with that, that cutting the bird off and hurting it to the gun, you can't train that. No. That's just innate in the dog. So. Yeah. You hear about that kind of a similar trait with some pointers where they figure out how to kind of like maneuver themselves and e like either look with their eyes or point with their nose or kind of sure. kind of give you the hints where the, the bird is exactly at. But that's, mm -hmm. that's like that on steroids when you think about a, a collie getting around it. It is. It is Patch the Wonder Dog. He was so cool. That that dog. So when somebody calls you up like that and you go, "Hey, what the hell? I'll see if I can get this dog doing something with birds." Is there it seems like you kind of uh revel in the challenge. I I'm getting oh, I love it. Yeah, I'm getting that impression from the the natural bend toward Chessies and then just taking on any kind of dog, upland pointer flusher you know, Southern dogs, Northern dogs, whatever, all these different breeds. You just, you must love the, the variance in individual dogs and just the, the success of taking a wide variety of dogs and making them better. I really do. You know, every dog, as I said earlier, every dog I put my hands on is going to teach me something. And my goal is always to get 100% of whatever each individual's capability is. But having such a mixed bag like that, you know, it's not like I'm running the same drill over and over all day long. There's always, it's always new. It's always challenging. And I love it when somebody says, you can't get my dog to do this. Really? Want to bet? <laughs> give, give me a good example of that. <laughs> oh, gosh. Let's see. I'm trying to think of a good one here. You have to, might have to give me a minute. Um, of course, the gun shy ones are always a challenge. Mm-hmm. 
How, um, how common is that? Oh, way more common than I'd like. Yeah. Um, normally, I get the calls in the fall, usually from somebody I've never met who took his young lab puppy out to the duck blind, who's never seen a duck and never heard a gun go off. And then three of his buddies shot 12 gauges over the puppy. Um, those are always a challenge, you know, and the guy will say, can I drop it off for a couple of weeks? Can you fix it? And I said, let's talk about maybe five months. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. those are always a challenge. And of all the dogs I've done, knock on wood, there's only been one I haven't been able to fix. Wow. Was it a lab? It was a lab. And the sad part was the lab, it was impeccably bred. I know the breeder, she's a good friend of mine and it wasn't the breed. I don't know what it was. Um, and the owner wouldn't, wouldn't confess. So something really put that dog over the edge. I even fed him birds for a while because in order to get over gun shy, they've got to be excited about birds. Yeah. And this dog had zero, he had zero retrieve drive, zero interest in birds. And I don't know what ever caused it, but it think, was a point of pride. I couldn't fix it. It Was there some kind of pain mixed in with the, do you think, do you think, cause I've. Don't know. Yeah. I, I remember reading this was probably in field and stream years ago or some, some magazine talking about a dog that hit a electric fence at the same time. It first heard a gunshot mm -hmm. and it was like, <laughs> sorry, I'm not, I'm not cool with this anymore. So it may, when you, when, when you get every dog over that hump in your, in your long training career, except that one, it just makes you wonder how bad that had to be with that dog. Yeah. Yeah. You, you never really find out the whole story, but yeah. It, it's it, it was sad and he was so well bred and there's no reason that dog shouldn't have been absolutely bird crazy you know they're going to see a hundred birds here before they ever hear a gunshot with a blank pistol mm -hmm. if it's gunshot so it, your your strategy with that when somebody brings you a gun shy dog is you know there's no there's no specific time there's no there's no framework you can say like no. it, it just no. it's just an individual development thing and it starts out like can you kind of walk us through it Sure, sure. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is say any training the dog has is out the window. All bets are off. Nothing the dog does is wrong because I'm going to fill my bird bag with pigeons and we're going to go out to the field and I don't care if he jumps on me. I want him excited about birds. If he catches one, I don't care. I want him to see me coming to the kennel and doing how I'm backflips at the door saying, let's go chase some more birds. Mm -hmm. And he's going to see birds and birds and birds until he can't stand it, he's so beside himself. And then the gun becomes background noise. But they're going to see, they might spend a month or more just chasing birds every day. Mm -hmm. So do you... Five and 15 birds. When you're developing that just crazy level of excitement and, and enjoyment around the dogs, or I mean, sorry, around the birds, then eventually, you know, a month into it, when that, that excitement's at like a fever pitch, you're, you're introducing like distant soft gun fire or something? Yeah, you know, I'll I'll take a pigeon by the wings and I'll hold it close to the body and I'll tease the dog with it. And if you skip it low across the ground, they'll fly for about 20 yards or so. The dog can almost catch them and they stay low to the ground. And I want that kind of drive. I want the dog to have that much chase. So and I don't care what the dog does. There's no obedience required. No rules. Yep. All bets are off. It's party time. 